This is a demo of the Symantec Managed Endpoint Detection and Response Service, or MEDR. I will walk you through how we deliver our managed threat hunting and the types of detections that trigger an investigation. I'll review a security incident which will cover our investigation process, remediation, and the analyst's assessment. MEDR is supported by Symantec's Managed Security Services, six global security operation centers, and expert analysts delivering monitoring, detection, and response. MEDR is also backed by Symantec's Global Intelligence Network, or GIN, the world's largest civilian threat intelligence database made up of billions of sensors globally. The first feature we want to focus on is managed threat hunting, our turnkey continuous threat hunting program. MEDR SOC analysts use Symantec EDR to deliver the service and it's important to understand the type of data available within EDR and how the data can be queried and reviewed. This chart shows you the relationship between the data sets available and how we can review in the context of the customer, the endpoint, or the user when doing an investigation. Sprout query language is used to interact with the data in EDR. We can join multiple data sets as we perform our investigations and add filters for specific artifacts. If you look at this example, we are looking for the file wfdratings.exe, an indicator related to a recent Emotet campaign. As you can see for the endpoint and file data, we have multiple data points for each artifact type. You have the ability to modify your view to focus on what's most important for this part of your investigation. So let me show you how we configure our columns to just view endpoint name, endpoint address, operating system. We'll also want to grab the file hash, the file name, the file path, file created, accessed, and modified. And we'll want to grab this for the MFT data as well. The last field we're going to try to grab is the file size. Now that we see our query works, we can use this to build a new detection with our investigation playbook feature. This will allow us to hunt for threats within already collected data and add it to recurring daily threat hunts on the network. By clicking this button, it turns my Sprout query into an investigation playbook. The playbook acts as a logical flow for our data. We take a set of results from our recent sweep and process it through the flow of our Sprout query, taking the results and creating an event with a configurable score. Any files collected can be passed into the threat feeds for additional scoring and context. Before we review some detections, let's take a look at some of the other investigation playbooks available in EDR. Included are detections for anomalous machine and user behaviors detected leveraging the baseline that EDR maintains in the environment. Detections for adversary techniques have been developed and mapped to MITRE Cyber Analytics Repository as well. Custom playbooks are also developed by request of MEDR customers or using indicators uncovered during an MEDR investigation. Let's take a look at some of our detections in EDR. When reviewing a detection, we can see the various severities ranging from low to high. We can also build out filters looking at the attack technique, whether there's a suspected breach, the type of threat identified, and we can also go ahead and filter at all time. Within each event, you'll notice a few things. So we have our chart showing at the endpoint impacted and specific artifacts related to the detected file. Here we can see on the endpoint that there were some changes made to the registry. Underneath here, you can see any callouts for whether the file was detected as malicious, signs of lateral movement, persistence, a rootkit, or user behavior detections. We also have callouts from the threat feeds noting that the file was blacklisted and marked as a threat. And at the bottom, we have some additional details for the artifacts shown above in our chart. Now I'm going to walk you through one of our use cases for an incident. As we walk through it, uh, I want to ask a few questions. So we're going to try to figure out, is the host infected? Did this malware run? Is there a persistence mechanism? And are we able to attribute this to a particular threat? So for this, we're presented with a detection for the file PO.SCR, which was detected on May 17th, 2019. Reviewing the information on the host, we'll try to determine the scope of our incident. We'll begin with configuring the columns that we want to hone in on. We'll start off with the hash, the file path, the MFT created and access times, the collected date, and the file size. So as we take a look at the file, we'll be able to see that it was created on May 17, 2019, 
and this is the exact time that gives us our time frame of interest and provides a pivot point for our investigation. Now let's take a look at our files on our host by file creation time to see if we can spot anything of interest after the creation of our file po.scr. Looking here, we can see the creation time of multiple smaller files that don't appear to be executables and three other suspicious files, fca.exe, redservices.exe, and meg underscore df1. After researching po.scr and the other artifacts, this host appears to be infected with the nanocore rat. Since we know that this is malware, we'll want to identify any evidence of execution, so we'll start by checking if there are processes running during the time of the artifact collection from this endpoint. We're going to filter down our processes to focus on has a network connection, process path, process created, and process command line. So as you can see, when we take a look at the processes, we can see redservices.exe was running at the time of collection. We can see that this process does have a network connection as well, and so as we add the network field, we can narrow down our results for redservices.exe to see if we can gather more information about the network connectivity. We're also going to go ahead and add the network city, network country, remote IP address for the destination IP, and process fields we collected earlier. As we can see in our first row, we can see redservices.exe communicating to this IP address, which we saw in our earlier report of the NanoCore rat. This shows us that NanoCore is running with a process space of redservices.exe. Since we have evidence of execution, we're not going to take a look at the prefetch. Instead, we're going to focus our attention on the registry keys to determine how that malware was able to establish its persistence. So what we're looking at are the registry keys from the host and sorted by the registry last write time. We can see the current version run registry key was modified by fca.exe, which called upon the megdf1 data file that we found earlier, and it used this to establish persistence for each time that the system is going to boot. Now that we've walked through an investigation, let's go ahead and focus on our remediation actions. After collecting evidence for our assessment and determining isolation is necessary and has been pre-authorized by the client for the host in question, we can isolate this host from the network. EDR has the capabilities to delete artifacts on a single host or blacklist them across the network, allowing clients to leverage this feature to rapidly eradicate threats from their environment. After an MEDR analyst issues the isolate command, a request to invoke isolation is issued to the endpoint, enabling Symantec Endpoint Protection's quarantine firewall policy to limit communication to only Symantec tools to assist with the rest of the reco recovery process. This particular event steps through EDR's targeted attack analytics, detecting an adversary's misuse of a non-malicious tool to notify a client of a potential breach. After completing our investigation, we need to publish our findings to the client for their review in the customer portal. Here they will be able to see the key events that triggered the investigation, as well as the assessment of the investigator. It is common for your assessment to include the scope of the incident, a timeline, details on the threat identified, and remediation steps or next actions required to close out the incident. Well, that concludes my demo. I hope it was helpful and thank you very much for your time.